Welcome back to Frontend Hero, and welcome back to this series on creating our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript theme from scratch. In the previous video, we created this area here to showcase our clients. And in today's video, we're going to create this area here that will display our pricing. Okay, let's dig in. So same as before, I'm going to create a section here, give it an ID of pricing for this area, give it a wrapper, and I'm going to insert the uh, pricing tables inside here. But first off, I'm going to have Adobe Illustrator here to the right hand side so I can reference the visual. Okay, so the first thing we can see is that simple pricing, uh, the heading here, is the same as our clients. It is center aligned. So what I'm going to do is simply just copy and paste the, uh, the previous client's heading and paste it down here into the pricing area. And then just change the text to simple pricing. So after our heading, we're going to add in our grid. And the same as before, we're going to give it a grid row class. I will remove the gap here because we don't need a gap. Um, and then give it some uh, grid spans here. So these are three columns. So that means I need a span of four. So I'll say span hyphen four. Close off that there now. And now we have the outline for our first pricing table. So just check there real quick. So this area will now contain space for three pricing tables. Next up, we need a heading, which is the price. And I'm going to give that a H2 tag here. So a heading two. Add in our pound symbol and 299 for the first table. Now we need a subheading, uh, which is going to be a heading of four. And that's going to contain the package kind of title. So the first one is bronze package. Just like that. Now, because we have two headings here, what I'm going to do is group them by using the H group tag. And this will come in handy a little bit later also because we can use it to adjust padding for mobile uh, devices and stuff like that. So next up looking here, we have about eight list items. Some are included and some are not included in the first uh, pricing table. So the first four are included with a blue tick and the bottom four have a gray X. So let's add in those now by using an unordered list. And I'm going to call this list pricing features. So what I'll do now is just populate these uh, list items now with the following uh, lorem ipsum. And that's the eighth one there. Okay, so now that we have all of our pricing features listed out here, Next up, we're going to add in the icons. Now, unfortunately, we can't utilize the Themify library because the icons don't really suit this project. But what I'm going to do is use Font Awesome, um, not download the kit, but actually just uh, copy and paste the SVGs. So the first icon I'm going to look for is the tick. And that one looks good right there. So all I'm going to do is just copy the SVG and paste it in to our features. And there we are. We will color it in a bit, but that looks good for the moment. Now let's look for an X icon. And this one here looks perfect, this uh, X mark one. And I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to copy the SVG and paste it into the bottom four features. Okay, so now we have two icons to illustrate what's available in each package and what is unavailable. And the last thing in each pricing table is a learn more button. So let's pop that in now and we can go back then and play with the colors and font sizes and padding of our table. So to create a button, we're just going to use the BTN class. Pop in learn more. And that looks good. Now we can see in the visual that these buttons here have an arrow. But luckily we created this in a previous video and we have a class called BTN with arrow. So I'll just add this class in now. 
and now our button contains a nice little arrow. And that is our pricing table complete. So we have a heading, subheading, um, our list features, our icons, and a button to learn more about that particular package. So all I'm going to do now is copy and paste this pricing table and repeat it two more times. Oh, one thing I need to change here is the class called our client, uh, copied and pasted from a previous uh, code block. And I'll rename this to pricing table. And I'll add in a comment for each pricing table just so I can, can clearly see which is a pricing table. And then I'm just going to amend the prices and the package titles and then the icons. And now we have our three packages, our bronze, silver, and gold. Now let's clean it up a bit. So I'm going to go back up to the table of contents here in our CSS file, and I'll just create a new area called block forward slash pricing. And that is number 13. So down at the very bottom, just after our clients, we're going to add this block in here now. And the first thing we'll do is target the section called pricing. Give it a red border as per usual. And now all I'm going to do is basically, as per the visual, I'm going to give each pricing table um, that blue border, which is the secondary color, I believe. So give it a top border. Uh, give it a bottom border. and a left border. And the last package, which is the gold package, I'm going to give it a pseudo element of last child and target the right hand side border here. And now our pricing table is beginning to look a little bit like our visual. So first things first, I'm going to give it a background. Um, I think I'll give it a background of white, just in case we do actually change the background color of our whole pricing area. I'll give it a padding all around to 2.5 rem, see how that looks. And that looks pretty good. Checking the visual here. Yeah, we'll keep that at 2.5 rem. Now, as we can see in the visual, everything is essentially center aligned. So I'll just create a wildcard and say text align everything in the pricing table center. Uh, next up, the padding between the heading and the subheading is a little bit too large. So what I'd like to do is narrow that a bit. So I'm going to target the H2 first. And I'll say margin is only one rem. So we can see the difference there. So it just tightens things up a bit and give it that color of secondary color, which is the secondary color of blue. And next up is our pricing features. So as we can see, it's very condensed at the moment. It's not very readable. So what I like to do is create a bit more padding. So I'm going to target each list item and say, Padding is one rem, top and bottom. And that looks miles better. So zooming in a bit here to have a look at the icons, we can see that they're not exactly lined up, but we can use our old friend display flex to automatically do that. Unfortunately, that creates a side effect of left aligning our text but we can fix that in a moment. So what I'm going to do to combat this issue of text uh, left aligning is to say on the list item, justify content center. And that fixes our issue and quite nicely there now. Now, another thing I can see is the icon is extremely close to the text. 
So next up, I'm going to target the icon, which is an SVG. And then I'll just give it a height and width. And then say margin right is probably about one rem. And that looks bags better. And again, it's starting to look a lot better now. It's more readable and there's more space. And next up, we need to change the color of the icon. So first off, I'm going to change the color globally for all of these uh, icons to blue. So fill var secondary color. And now I'm going to need a way to differentiate the included features from the non-included features. So I think what I will do is to create a class called no feature. So I'm just going to add this no feature class to the list items that are not included in our pricing packages. So let me add in these now and I'll fast forward this bit. And then I'll just create a new class called li.no feature, target the SVG and give it a new fill mode. And I'll say the fill mode is going to be body text, which is gray. And that's looking good. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is to target the button here. And we need to center align that also. So what I'll simply do is to give it a position of absolute. Um, I'll say the bottom is three rem from the bottom of the pricing table. And I probably need to give the pricing table a position of relative. Okay, with that done, um, so we have a bottom of three rem. Left is 50%. Add transform translate X on the X axis is minus 50%. Now, obviously we have a bit of an issue here now. It's kind of obscuring the uh, list items. So we'll have to give the bottom area of the pricing table some extra padding to accommodate this button. So popping back into our pricing table, I'm going to just amend the padding here by saying 2.5 RAM all the way around, apart from the bottom padding, which I think I'm going to give say 10 RAM. And that looks decent actually, that looks all right. And I think 10 rem is the winner here. So that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, it's starting to look pretty good. So let's test a bit more. Referencing the, uh, the visual here. Okay, so we do have an issue with this button here if we start minimizing the browser window, but we can come back to that in a moment and fix that up. For the moment, I'm just going to create some MIDI queries to start targeting the mobile kind of uh, view. So what I'm going to do is to target the MIDI query size of 850 pixels as the design starts to look a little bit crushed at this point. And then all I'm going to do is start stacking each um, pricing table. So I'm gonna give it a grid column span of 12. Just like that. Now we could leave it like that there. That looks perfectly fine and nice and readable, but I think I'm going to try something a little bit different. What I'd like to test out is if I can make this area a bit more compact. So the headings to the left, all of the list items on a row, and then we can just scroll along and see all the features and maybe the button can be up at the top right hand side. So please bear with me. I think I'm gonna go down this route and see if I can accomplish this. The very first thing I need to do is to remove the padding from this pricing table. And then with the padding removed, I'm going to change the color of the border to primary color blue. Because what I envision is the two headings to have a background color of primary blue also. So next up, I'm going to left align the headings here. So I'll just say pricing table H2 and pricing table H4 text align left. Then I'm going to start targeting the, uh, the features, the list items. So 
So I'll say, um, because we're using flex, I'll say justify content left. And also the spacing between the headings here look a little bit too big. So what I'm going to do is just say margin zero. And that looks all right. So yeah, I'll leave it at margin zero for the headings here. So now, because everything's squashed together, we're going to need some padding here for these headings. So as we already used this hgroup tag, all I'm going to do is target this here. And I'll say the background color is primary color, the same as our borders. We do need to change uh, the text colors here. So I'm going to say the H4 is a color of white. Um, and the price color remains the same. Now let's give this H group a padding of 1.5 rem. Yep, I think it's starting to look actually okay. So next up, what I'm going to do is probably pop all of these list items on one row. So first things first, let's add in our red border. Now, a few ways to do this, but what I think I'm going to do is, um, is use the grid. So I'm going to say for the pricing features for our on order list, I'll say display grid and give it a grid template columns value of eight um, values, which is our eight features and say each, um, each section is going to be 150 pixels. And I'm pretty happy with that, actually. It needs a bit of work, obviously, but yeah, that looks okay. We need to next probably um, enable the scroll um, because it's obviously overflowing out of the, the, uh, the box here. So to combat that, I'll simply say overflow auto. Save that. And bish bash bosh. So now, we have a nice little kind of organized compact table here with our features, which is pretty nifty, I think. Now to separate these features a bit more, um, instead of just using white space, what I think I'm going to do is to give each um, list item a border. And I'll say the same again. So the border color will be primary, uh, primary color, which is primary blue. Um, but yeah, that definitely looks a lot better, I think. Now to give it a bit of breathing room, I'll say padding 1.5 uh, rem. And we are definitely getting there. Now, I think next up, I'm just going to say for each list item, which is currently flex, I'm going to give it a flex direction of column. So I'll put the icon above the text, just like that. So we have a little issue here just before I move on. Um, we can see it as a double border here for the very last item on of our pricing features. So I'm just gonna clear that up real quick. I'll target the last child pseudo elements and I'll say border is none. And that's cleaned up nicely. Okay, getting back into gear here. So next up, I'm going to left align the text and I can see here that the text is just center aligned by using our previous wildcard. So all I'll do is just overwrite that now in our little media query and say text align is now left. Poifik. Okay, zooming out a bit and let's have a look what we got. Um, so our icon needs a bit of space, uh, I do believe. 
So I'll say for the SVG or the icon, I'll say margin bottom is one rem. Yep, we are getting there. Okay, next up, we can see that the text is a little bit squashed. So what I'll say is I'll give it a line height of the list item and I'll say the line height is three rem, which is way too big. Okay, maybe two rem. Uh, yeah, that looks okay. So I think we'll leave it at two rem. Um, okay, so now we can see uh, this button here is kind of taking over the show here. Um, as I say, I'd like this button to appear on the top right hand side. So I'll target this here now in the CSS. And first off, I'll say top is zero. Let's have a look at our previous uh, rule set here. So I'll copy and paste these here now so we know what we've got. Paste them in. Okay, so position absolute, we don't need that. That's redundant. Um, a bottom is auto. Okay, so left will be auto also. And then we don't need this transform rule anymore. So I'll say transform none. Now, perfect. Now we just need to right align it. So I'll say right is zero. Boom. Okay, now let's give it some breathing room. So I'll say um, right is two rem. Okay, and now let's uh, align it from the top. And I'll say maybe 10 or 11%. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, um, I think what I'd like to do is to remove the text here, this learn more text and to just include the arrow for the button. I think that could look quite nice. Um, what I'm going to do first is say text indent is minus 9999 pixels. And if you're a coder from way back in the day, uh, we actually used to use this little technique here for SEO reasons. Uh, I won't go into it in too much detail here, but um, this takes me back a little bit. So anyway, this works quite nicely. This does remove the text. Um, obviously our arrow is gone. Um, so what can we do to bring that back? Let's target the pseudo element here, which is the after element. And all I'm going to do is try to bring it back by saying on this particular element, text indent is zero or normal and see what we get. Hey, bingo. Okay, so that brings our arrow back quite nicely. We just need to alter the uh, position and size. So for the main button, I'll say uh, width is five rem, height is five rem. And I'm just trying to feel out the, the proper size here. So um, see how they look. That looks okay. So padding is zero. Give it a display of flex. And then I'm going to align everything in the center, which looks pretty good. But we still see there's a, there's a gap there to the left. Let me try and text align this and see what happens. Nope, nothing. Why is that? Ah, okay, so looking at in the inspector panel, we can see that it has an inherited style of write one rem. Uh, we'll just say write is auto. Perfect, and now we can say width is 100% and everything is text aligned and we are looking good. Yep, quite happy with that actually. And you can scroll and you see all your features. Um, yep, very happy with that. So now coming back to the last piece of the puzzle, which is fixing this button here. So as we can see, um, as we kind of narrow the viewport or the browser window, we can see learn more goes on to two lines, but it looks really bad. So let's see what we can do to fix that. 
So what I'm going to do in the CSS file in the non media query in the main area, I'm going to target the button in the pricing table. And I'm going to say min width is 150 pixels and save. Or maybe 170 pixels. 170 seems to be the magic number. And now as we minimize the viewport, we can see that the button still looks pretty good as we go down to mobile. So I'm happy with that. But now we see one last little issue. On mobile view, uh, we're still left with this min width uh, of 170 pixels. Not ideal. So let's remove that in our media query. And all I'll say is min width is auto. Okay, looking good. And I think that's about it for the moment. So let's check what we've got here in full view. So yeah, it's starting to look and feel like a proper website. And this pricing table, although quite basic, um, I think it does the job. We can see what's on offer, what's on available. So yeah, that's it for the moment. Um, next up, we're going to work on this uh, team section, which I'm quite excited about. But yeah, that's for the next video. Thanks very much and catch you guys then.